I made this scene in Spline, and if you want to level up your skills, then you should follow along. Because after watching this video, you'll not only learn how to make a complex water shader, animate the fish and make these detailed outlines, but also how to make it interactive and add it to a website. This video is sponsored by Spline, let's jump right in. First of all, change the background color and add the cube. Scale it up and the size of this cube is 404 on all sides. Round the corners, 40 looks good. Remember this number because we need this later. Let's put this cube in the middle. Right click on it and reset position. Enable grid snapping and move it up till it's sitting on the grid. To separate this cube into two pieces, I'll show you two methods. The first is done with modeling tools, which is a destructive workflow. And the second is with booleans, which is a non-destructive workflow. Let's start with the modeling tools. Rename this cube to water and click on smooth and edit, so we can edit the mesh later. Close the edit view and duplicate the cube with Ctrl D. And this is gonna be the sand. Let's separate them. Select the water and click on edit mesh. Choose the vertex selection, delete these vertices and move these up. Now close this and select the sand. Delete these points and move these down so now we have a cube but with separated parts. When you hide the water, you can see this hole. To fill it, go to Edit View, choose Edge Select and select an edge. And click Fill Hole. I don't like how this looks, so Ctrl Z to undo. And go to the settings and change the hole filling to End Gun, which means there will be one single face. Now fill the hole, but you see the edge is smooth. I don't want that, so change the subdivision level to 0. And we have a flat face. Change the subdivision to 0 for the water as well, because we don't need unnecessary geometry. Now I'll show you the other workflow, which uses booleans. Duplicate the cube and remove the corners to make a straight cut. This cube will cut the other one. Select the two cubes, go to the right panel and in booleans select the subject option. Now you can move this cube to change the cut. Then you can duplicate this and change the position of the second cube to create the lower cut. And that's it for the modeling. Let's continue with the sand material, then I'll show you how I made the water. Number one thing is to disable lighting to get that flat 2D look. Then click on this arrow and add the depth layer. With this I can add the color as well as a shadow. Change the type to linear and set the Z direction to minus one, so we get a diagonal gradient. Pull this slider all the way to the left so we have a sharp line. Then drag this thing till the line is in the middle. Let's set the colors, a darker one for the shadow and a lighter one for the other side. Don't worry, we'll get rid of that line on the top face later. The next thing is an outline. Click on the plus button and select outline. Change the color and set the width to 4. Now it's time to add some details. Add the noise texture and drag it under the outline. Change the texture type to Voronoi, which gives us circles, but it's too blurry. With the high and low cut, the sharpness can be changed. I set the high to 0.08 and the low to 0.081, so they are really close to each other, resulting in sharp circles. If you set the opacity of this color to zero, only the circles are showing. Let's change their color to match the outline. You can then play with the seed, the scale and the movement settings to get a distribution of circles that you like. The next thing is to add the different color to the top face. So right click on the depth and duplicate it. Change the Y to 1 and the X and the Z to 0. This way the gradient is vertical. Pull this guy down till the darker color shows up. Select the lighter color and change the opacity to 0 so the diagonal shadow that is underneath this layer becomes visible. I'll change the color to a dark green because this is the seabed. Make sure the depth layers are in the right order so the seabed is on top. I just want to let you know that if you have any problems, then you can remix my project file on my spline community profile. It's time to make the water material. Select the cube and disable lighting. Add the dark green outline and make it wider. It's not visible at the bottom, so double click on the cube and move these vertices up a tiny bit. Add the depth and put it under the outline. Change the type to linear and the direction to 0 on the x axis and 1 on the y. Switch to smooth and adjust the handles so the gradient starts at the top and ends at the bottom. Change the top color to turquoise and the bottom to a darker shade. Decrease the opacity to 70 to make the water see-through. Enable both sides here so we can see the inside faces as well. 
we'll make a shadow just like we did on the sand. Duplicate the depth and change the direction to 1 on the X, 0 on the Y and minus 1 on the Z axis. Change this color to black and make it transparent. Make this color darker and drag the left slider all the way to the right to make a sharp line. Then grab this handle and adjust it till it's aligned with the shadow on the sand. Change the opacity to 45 and click on these circles, not the plus button, and choose the multiply blend mode. To get rid of that line on the top, add the depth and put it under the outline. Change the type to linear and the direction to 0 on the X and 1 on the Y axis. Drag the white slider all the way to the right and adjust this handle till the line is around the middle of the bevel. And now switch to mask and the line is gone. To make this water pop, add the color and drag it under the outline. Change the color to a dark blue, select overlay in the blend modes and decrease the opacity. Before, after. Let's make the caustics to take this water to the next level. Add the noise and put it under the outline. Choose Voronoi and the style is power. Make it less smooth and stretch it along the y-axis. It looks too uniform on the sides, so scale it up on the z-axis just a bit. Now it's better. Scale the whole thing down by a small amount. What really sells this effect is the movement. We'll animate that later. Make this color black. To blend this effect with the water, duplicate the first depth layer and move it under the noise. Click on the noise and switch to mask. Now the gradient only shows up where the caustics are white. To make it more obvious, make it 100% opaque and change the blend mode to overlay. Go into the gradient settings and make this color brighter. And this one like this. And decrease its opacity to zero. What this does, it makes the caustics less bright towards the bottom. With these handles, you can control how far the light travels down into the water and how bright it is. And now, if you adjust the movement, the water looks beautiful. Let's make the top part prettier. First of all, I'm gonna remove the caustics on top because I'm gonna replace that with a tune looking white water. So to remove it, open this depth layer and drag this slider to the left. Click on this empty area to add the new slider. Drag it all the way to the right and make it transparent. Move the slider to the right. Now we gotta adjust this far slider to line up with the shadow. Don't do it manually. Select this depth layer we mask the shadow with, copy the far value and paste it here. It's perfectly aligned. Let's make the top face brighter. Duplicate this depth layer and move it here. Change it to color mode and make the bottom color transparent. Make this color light green. Decrease the opacity to 70 to make it see-through. It's time to make the white water. Duplicate the noise we use for the caustics and switch to color mode so we can see what we are doing. Change the style to lines and flip the colors by changing the low cut to 1 and the high to 0. You can change the width of these lines with the smoothness slider. To remove the texture from the bottom half, duplicate this depth layer and switch the noise to mask mode. Make the depth 100% opaque and change this top color to a light green. These lines are too straight. To add some roundness to them, duplicate this noise layer and switch to color mode to see the texture. Change the style to power and turn off smoothness. We can make this sharp with the high and low cut. I set the high to 0.351 and the low to 0.35. Don't change the rest of the settings, otherwise the noise texture won't line up. To remove the texture on the sides, duplicate this depth we use for the other texture and drag it below this noise. Click on the noise and switch to mask mode. And look at that, you've made white water. If you want to make the texture less round, then increase the high and low cut. Make sure you don't flip those sliders, otherwise it will look wrong. Let's animate the water. Add a new state, click on this noise and change the movement to 100. Now if you click on the base state, you can see the movement is 22 there. So we gotta tell spline to transition between these two states. To do that, add an event and the transition action. Now if you hit play, you can see it's way too fast and it stops. So go back and set the transition speed to 120. This makes it slower. Set the transition falloff to linear to make the speed constant. Make it loop by selecting the infinite option. Now that's what I'm talking about. Let's animate the other noise textures. Select the state and set the movement to 100 for this texture and for this one as well. 
And when you hit play, you have an amazing water animation. And we are done with the water. Congrats if you are still here. Now we're gonna fill the scene with details. First of all, let's make secondary outlines. I found an efficient way to make them. Go to the top view and add the rectangle. Change the size and corner value to the same as the cube. That's why you had to remember it. Right click, reset the position and move it up. Change the corner to arc. How is this an outline? Well, click on convert to path and that's how. Make it thinner and place it on this line. Go to the top view and scale it down while holding down Alt plus Shift for even scaling. Increase the subdivisions and decrease the sides to optimize geometry. Turn off lighting and change the color to match with the outline. To make cuts in this line, use the depth slider. Change the caps to round to make it neat. To add the line here, duplicate it and change the depth and offset slider till the line gets in the right position. And you have an outline with cuts in it. Now keep doing this till you have a more detailed outline. To add outlines on the edges, add the path in front view. Click here and here. Then switch to cursor and make sure both points are aligned. For me, both X positions are set to zero. Round the caps and make it as thin as the other outlines. Place it on the edge and click on edit path. Move this up, then duplicate it and move this down. And you have a detailed outline. Make this on all sides with some variety and do this for the sand as well. So I did some scene building off camera. Bruh. Don't worry, it's not as hard as you think. I found these models in the library. The rocks, the fish, the anchor and also the plants. Yeah, those are indoor plants, but not anymore. I distributed them in the scene, scaled them up and down and rotated them. Gave them new colors and depth effects. I have a challenge for you. Explore the library and make your own underwater scene. But if you are feeling lost, then check my file. I'll show you how to animate the fish. Go to the top view and make a path for the fish to swim on. Then make it thinner. Put the fish in a new group with Ctrl G so it's nested like so. Select this group. Here's this align to path setting. Select the path from the drop down menu and now the fish is on the path, but in the wrong direction. This is when this nested group comes in handy. Select the subgroup and rotate it by 90 degrees. Select the main group and you can slide the fish along the path. So cool. But you can see the fish is slightly off center. To fix it, select the main group while holding down Alt. Now you can move the origin of that group to the center. And now it's perfect. Change the path scale to zero so it's invisible. To animate it, select the main group, add the new state and slide the slide slider to the right. Add an event, select the transition, make it linear and the loop to infinite. Let's check. It's way too fast. Set it to 50. Oh my god. Set it to 10. It's perfect. And you can adjust the path and it will update to the new shape. To make this scene complete, I found these clouds and birds in the library and I modeled this submarine. I made another version with a lighthouse. You can find that in the library too and also this boat. Oh, I almost forgot about the bubbles. Add the particle emitter, place it here and make it bigger. Change both colors to white. Make the size smaller. The birth rate controls the bubble's density. I'll set that to 10. Make them die less quickly with the lifetime setting and change the image to this sharp one. And this is the final scene. Before I embed this to a site, let's make it interactive. I'll use the submarine version because I have a fun idea. I put it in the group and add the new state. Let's move it down. It's up in the base state and down in the new state. Add an event and choose mouse press. Add the transition action and choose spring. Now when you press the sub and hold it, it goes down. And when you release it, it jumps back up. It seems lightweight, so increase the mass in the spring settings to 10. The stiffness to 70 and the damping to 15, so it stops sooner. And this is the final result. Let's add this to a site. Don't worry, no coding is needed. I'm using Framer to build one, cause it's easy to use. Add a new project and insert sections. Let's add this one, this one and this one. And change the colors. This is the place for the design. Go to Spline and click Export. Let's add the loading animation and the camera orbit hint. Then go to the play settings and disable pan and zoom. Click Update. Overview and hit Copy Embed. Go to Framer, hit Insert and search for Embed. 
drag this here and make it square. Switch to HTML here and paste the code we copied from Spline. It loaded up, but you can see these colors don't match. So go to Spline, play settings and hide the background color. Update the URL and refresh the site. Now the background is invisible. If you click this, you can preview the site. The design shows up and you can orbit around and interact with the submarine. How cool is that? To make the design load up quicker, you should optimize your scene. If you run a test, it tells you what to do and shows you the objects that have too many polygons. In my case, it's the fish, so I decrease the subdivisions to zero. Fix all the problems to make the scene lighter. You can not only add your designs to a website, but also make native 3D apps on iOS, thanks to the iOS export options like Embed, App Generation, and Vision OS. Thank you Spline for sponsoring this video.